Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Terranova Tech, and today I'm going to be showing you some custom, well, a custom uh, menu title bar for your Kinter projects. Uh, one thing that they are notorious for is having kind of a janky way of creating your own uh, menu bar. So I wanted to show you how I was able to overcome this, and I found a few examples online on Stack Overflow, but they weren't really that good. For some reason, they were always buggy or just didn't look the way I wanted it to. So let me show you an example. I was building this program the other day that shows all of the installed programs on your computer and you can add them to a list and run the programs, um, sort of like this Twitch thing that's been going around. And one thing that was really bothering me was the title bar. It's always like this. You can change the icon, sure, uh, but you can never really change the color. Um, however, you can override it, meaning you can disable it and then start creating your own, but it's very buggy. And what I mean by that is when you run the program it and try to click and drag, you might notice the mouse snaps to the left. Um, some things don't really work on it that well. It's really buggy and kind of annoying. Um, but this is what I landed on right here, and it's sad because it's a hundred lines of code almost. But it is exactly how I want it, so I'm very excited about this. Um, so let me run it and show you what it looks like. So this is it right here, and you can obviously change the name to whatever you'd like. Um, but this is this is fabulous. I mean, you can even add an icon on the top left. This is exactly how I want it. It's very sleek, modern. You can uh, make it bigger, but for my app, I wanted it quite small. And then you have these hover animations. Um, you can minimize the screen, you can exit, everything works functionally speaking um, on it, which is great. So let me show you how I achieved this. So um, the first thing is I set my, my color scheme um, to like dark grays and everything so I could reuse those later on. And then I have all of these buttons and labels. So I used a label, Tkinter uh, label for the text on the top left, and the rest are buttons. Uh, fairly so, because they are buttons. Um, and then you pack them in to the title bar, which is uh, up here. So we're using a frame for the top bar. Okay, so it, it's a Kinter frame, and we're packing things into the frame. Um, and let's see, so we have title bar, we expand it, we fill it in the X direction, and then we can pack... Um, title bar title to the left and all the buttons to the right and the window don't worry about the window you can uh, I have a note here you can replace that with your program later down the road so the window is just to show that you can pack things underneath it that's what this darker box is below that's where your actual app will go um, and then I have a bunch of these things so all of these functions right here are for one sole purpose and that is that animation on the top right so when we hover over um, these buttons, they will change the hover. So, so I took inspiration from these up here. If you hover over uh, these two, they're lighter gray, and then red for the X. So I, I sort of replicated that idea. And then these are just ASCII. These two uh, <laughs> icons are just ASCII symbols. Um, can't remember the alt codes, but if you look them up, you can find them. And that's just a regular X in uh, Calibri. Um, so anyway, they, the define, defining function um, to change the background to light gray or regular gray, that's what the R gray stands for. Um, and then this is to get rid of, this whole function right here, functions, are to get rid of the whole bug where um, if you've used the, if you use custom menu bars in Kinter, you'll know that when you click here in the middle and move, the mouse will snap to the top left which is, it's fine, but it, it looks really trashy. So what this does is it gets the position of the X and Y in your uh, mouse, defined by a button motion, a B1 motion right here, to get the position of the mouse. So you have title bar dot bind to the mouse position, and it gets that position and moves it in that position. So it doesn't snap to the left anymore, which is awesome, but that also caused a problem where, um, <laughs> Uh, you couldn't move it, uh, the window. So I had to put the function of move in there like this. It's kind of wonky. 
looking, but it works really smoothly, I found. So, and it's not, it's not laggy at all. It works, it works great. So, um, anyway, uh, minimize and frame mapped. This is for the sole purpose of minimizing. So, what happens here is this minimize function works on its own just fine and it will minimize it. But if you actually look closely, you can see the, the original white menu bar show up very quickly. Um, unfortunately, there's no way around this um, unless maybe, <laughs> can we do this first, I wonder? Make it false. I just realized that talking to you guys now. Nah, it doesn't matter. Okay. So anyway, um, <laughs> so it, it basically the minimize function disables or I'm sorry, it enables, false is enabling the, um, uh, the original menu bar. And the reason for that is, is because we have to call it true when we call this frame mapped function. And what that does is when you click on the bar at the bottom, so before, without this frame mapped function, if I hit minimize and I unminimized it, it would have my frame and it would have the original Kinter frame on top. So this basically just sets it back to true. And um, I think if we print event here, whoops, uh, print event or E, um, well, we can actually see the function being called when we bring the minimize function back in. So if I minimize and I click this right here, boop, you can see the map event is called, right? So that's that's essentially what's happening is when you when you unminimize it, the the uh, frame, it gets that function called and sets it back to true, which true is disabled, which is kind of hard to wrap your head around, but there you go. So you can just keep doing that, and it keeps printing the map event and disabling it when you bring it up. Luckily, it doesn't look trashy when you bring it back up. It doesn't, I mean, if you're really not paying attention to it, you can't really tell anyway. But that's that's as smooth as I've gotten that, so... And that's pretty much it. The rest are um, button binds uh, mapped down here. And then I have a little bit of an explanation about that frame mapped function here because it's it's not very intuitive. Um, these are these are intuitive. You're binding it to enter and leave. That's the hover and button one's just a left click. Um, so anyway, there you go. So I'm this is about as raw as it gets. Like there's no there's nothing custom here other than the title bar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share this on my GitHub. And if you want to mess around with it, use it for your own projects. I'm giving you guys full rights to have it. Um, most of this was poached anyway. Also, fun fact, and I did not know this, and no one taught me this, and I just learned it today, even though I've been working with Kinter for a long time. This root.geometry, plus 500, plus 300 right here, um, that is the, the plus 500, plus 300 is where it starts on the screen. So if I change this to two, maybe you guys don't know this. It starts over over on the left hand side and if I change this to five it'll start more to the right this is phenomenal and I'm so upset that I didn't know this because oh man this is just so cool I don't know about you guys but every time I start a new Kinter project it actually drives me bonkers on where the, the thing starts and you can actually start it in full screen mode too. So just just as a heads up, th those are things you can do. I didn't know that. Maybe that's beginner level stuff. I don't know. But I figured I'd sh excuse me, I'd share. Um, so there you go. This will be in my um, this will be in my GitHub uh, link below. If you want to just copy paste it in your next Kinter project, go for it. Um, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. This is really exciting for me. Um, I couldn't find one that was good, and I feel like this one's actually good. If you guys also have any suggestions and you're not too familiar with Kinter and, and messing around with it, and you want to see me change a few things, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. But uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, uh, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video.